Hi, my name is Ernest Hancock and I'm publisher of freedomsphoenix.com. Today we have a special guest, Cindy Sheehan. I've known about what she's been about and what she's been doing for the past five years or so. And I'm telling you, a mom always gets to have the last word. Well, today she had uh, some words with uh, uh, one of our U.S. Senators here. Welcome, Cindy. Hi, Ernie. Thank well, you. Tell us about what happened at John McCain's office and why. Well, um, the peace community here in Phoenix is opposed to and rightfully opposed to the confirmation of Stanley McChrystal to be the commander in the new AFPAC region. Um, they're opposed to it because, first of all, he's a liar. He lied about and covered up Pat Tillman's death. And um, I'm opposed to it because of that, but also because I don't think we should be increasing forces in Afghanistan and, and cross uh, the border and bombing Pakistan. I don't think we need uh, a military presence there, and especially one like McChrystal. I think McChrystal sends a clear message to the people of that region, region number one, that um, we're going to nail them to the wall and to the peace movement here. Obama sent that message to the peace movement that he does not care about his base. And so um, I joined with a coalition of peace groups here, and we, we protested in front of John McCain, Senator McCain's office here in Phoenix, and we delivered a message um, inside to him that his constituents want their voices heard and that they're opposed to the confirmation which uh, McCain seems to be supporting. Well, that's one thing that I definitely wanted to get into. There, there's two things. One, you have plans to go to Dallas. You know, you want to make sure that the, the past war criminal doesn't get off scot-free, that, you know, once your terms are over, you just get to go back into life and chill. Well, that's not going to happen. I want you to talk to us a little bit about that. Well, first of all, you know, George Bush, uh, I believe he still has a place in Crawford, but he and um, Laura live mainly in Dallas now and it's to me personally I'm never going to be able to move on with my life the way it was before George Bush was president right my son is dead my son will always be dead and I'll always have that place in my heart where he should where you know he should be but George Bush um, committed war crimes and crimes against humanity. It's not just George Bush, it's his administration. You know, Dick Cheney is going all over TV bragging about it lately. And it seems like Dick Cheney is the person that's still driving foreign policy, right? He, um, McChrystal, his general, Cheney's general, is being appointed for um, AFPAC. Um, they went to Obama and said, don't release the torture fo photos. And Obama caved in to them and not to the pressure from the left. So. Um, it's just that George Bush should be held accountable, like you, not, not like you said, go and just lead a life of leisure after what he's done to the world. So personally, it's about getting justice for my son and my family, but you know, it, it's it's also about getting justice for the world, and and showing the world that Americans care about other people and not just ourselves. And one thing about the torture photos, the the system, the establishment, whatever, they, they say they're not releasing them because they don't want to harm the soldiers in the field. Well, you know, that's wrong on so many levels. First of all, they don't care about the soldiers in the field. They care obviously, to bring them obviously. <laughs> and, you know, secondly, torture harms our soldiers in the field. And everybody in the world knows that we're torturing, you know. And thirdly, if the release of those photos was followed up by accountability, you just can't release these these horribly inhumane and cruel photos and not hold somebody above the rank of specialist accountable for that. You know, we know that John Yu, the uh, um, Berkeley law professor, wrote the torture policies. We know he wrote it at the behest of um, the vice president and president's office. Dick Cheney has admitted to it, but Dick Cheney is trying to, you know, inflame passions like, well, it kept us safe. You know, um, it might have kept some people safe, but it didn't keep the people of Iraq, Afghanistan, and our soldiers safe, obviously. And so that's why we're protesting. You know, people in, uh, on the blogs, or even the left, so-called left blogs, are saying, you know, what's wrong with Cindy Sheehan? Doesn't she realize that George Bush isn't president anymore? Um, 
well, first of all, yes, I realize that. And, and secondly, it's not about going and telling George Bush to bring the troops home anymore. He didn't do that when he was president. He can't do it when he's a private citizen, for sure. Um, but it, it's about just keeping that issue alive. George Bush cannot get a, literally get away with murder and be allowed to, to forget about it. I'm going to have a big picture of my son. And I'm not, I'm not going to let George Bush's administration forget about what happened, but I'm not going to let the people of America forget about it either. Like they forgot the faces of 58,000 people um, during Vietnam and millions of Vietnamese. I, you know, I will never let our country forget it because if you forget it, then you repeat it. And now, look what well, we're doing now. Exactly. Now we're repeating it now. Yeah. No matter how important a lot of things like Downing Street memos and uh, a lot of other, the torch, Abu Ghraib came mm -hmm. out. And uh, there's so many things that came to the front that had no effect, not near as much as it did of mom. Mm -hmm. We saw at Camp Casey, I witnessed it happen, this effort to bring the peace movement under one banner you know, would move on and so on, had what, had what effect, and where are they now? So I want you to address those two things. What was the intent, by who, where did these people come from, mm -hmm. and where are they now, now that they got Obama in there, doing the same thing and expanding? In the summer of 2005, Camp Casey is the camp we set up outside of George Bush's ranch in Crawford, Texas. And um, you know how incredibly <laughs> busy it was every day. Some days I did 40 interviews, and so I didn't have a lot of time to, to really um, recognize what was happening. Everybody wanted a piece of me that summer. Some people drove all the way there just to hug me and then left, and that was a good thing. But um, now that I've been away from it for a while and had, a time to, had time to reflect on what was happening, and I could see it happening then also, was that Move On came out and they sent their heavy hitters out to Camp Casey to convince me to support the Democrats, you know, out of Iraq eventually bill. And I said, no, our, our um, demand from the peace movement and from Camp Casey of all the people like Military Families Speak Out, Iraq Vets Against the War, Veterans for Peace, is troops home immediately. And we can't compromise on that. And they said, well, Cindy, if you keep have, you know, um, presenting the hardline position, it'll be difficult to elect Democrats. And so I'm like, well, I don't care. That's not my mission. My mission is to bring the troops home from Iraq and Afghanistan. And that's what I'm working on. And so I think that organization, Move On especially, put a lot of money, a lot of effort into Camp Casey. They hired the PR firm, which I now can see was just there to control me and my message, not to help me, but to try and control me. And, um, and then co-opted the energy to elect Democrats. So it happened in 2006. We, we um, changed the face of Congress from Republican to Democrat. We still had a Republican president, obviously. And so at that point, the Democrats were telling me, well, we need more Democrats to do any good. Now we have a, a clear majority in both houses of Congress and a Democratic president. And we don't see one iota, one speck of change. So the movement and the energy, and there was incredible energy in the summer of 2005. It was directed towards the wrong thing. And, and the, and I think Move On and other organizations like that, whose main goal is the Democratic Party or who, who support the Democratic Party and getting the Democrats elected, they recognized that. And they wanted to control the message, but they wanted to use the energy for their ends. And once they achieved their ends, since the Democrats came into power in 2007, there's been little little effort from an anti-war or a peace movement. There's been pockets. In fact, Pat, the opposite. Right. There's been pockets of energy. You know, some groups and, and myself, we've never given up. But to take a, a movement that had hundreds of thousands of people and just just say, well, now we've met, we've made our goal and, and we can go home and move on has not sent one message out. I've heard I'm not on their list. I somehow I keep getting on their list and I get off their list.